Chapter 26 Epilogue The sun blazed overhead. There were even birds singing somewhere. The sky was as blue as his eyes, and there wasn't a cloud in sight, and I felt lighter than I had in months, like I hadn't known just how much was waiting on my shoulders until now. Lee and I had our arms wrapped around each other, both of us jumping up and down, out of sync for once, my head knocking against his chin and shoulders. It kind of hurt, but I didn't care. I was delirious. People were calling out, laughing, crying, trying to talk to everyone and anyone. We did it, a voice screamed, and then Cam threw himself on top of us. We are done. We are going to college. College, Lee, Lee yelled back. College, I yelled. College, Cam yelled again. There was a lot of yelling, and we weren't the only ones. Lee and I let go of each other. Cam had already run off, probably to yell, college, at more people. And just when I thought the hugging was done, Lee slung an arm around my shoulder and kissed the top of my head with a loud smacking noise. This is it, the beginning of a glorious golden summer, the kind they make indie teen movies out of, and then we are thrown into the soul-sucking pit of college. College so won't be soul-sucking. How do you know? Well, how do you know it will be? Lee just laughed. You are right. It's going to be so great. It really is. Don't jinx it. I don't want to end up with some awful roommate. What if my roommate is someone like you? Oh, God, just kill me now. Lee laughed again. He sounded as delirious as I felt. It was beautiful. Everything was so beautiful. Right now, I felt high on life, and I didn't ever want this feeling to end. I got into Berkeley. So did Lee. He didn't get into Brown. I looked around for Noah. I'd heard him cheering so loudly for me when my name got called and when Lee's name was called. He'd also sent a balloon bouquet up to me at school when I got my SAT results, the big softy. I hadn't seen him since before the graduation ceremony started, though getting lost in the crowd of graduation gowns. Just as I was thinking about him, Noah slid up behind me, putting his arms around me and turning me to face him, his touch sending a frill through me. He kissed me firmly on the lips before saying, Congrats, Shelley, officially a high school graduate. Then he glanced up and smoothed it on my hair. I'd taken the time to straighten it to sleek profession perfection this morning, but I bet I had some hat hair going on after wearing the graduation cap. Thanks. The last six months hadn't exactly been easy. Not that we'd had any more arguments, but I just missed him so much. And I knew how much he missed me, too. He'd surprised me with a visit home for Valentine's Day so we could celebrate together, even bringing me a giant teddy bear in a Harvard sweatshirt and cap. But we'd done it. We'd managed the long-distance thing since Thanksgiving, and it was all completely worth it now that we were standing here, the sun warm on my cheeks and my fingertips playing with the ends of Noah's hair and his lips were on mine. All right, you two, break it up, said my dad. I heard June laughing and buried my face in Noah's shoulder for a second before turning to our parents. Come on, we want more photos. I'd rather not have to get my daughter's graduation photo from a selfie on her Twitter feed. Noah stepped aside, and I fixed my hair before holding up my crisp high school diploma and smiling for the camera. My dad had barely snapped the photo when a blur in graduation robes barreled toward us, stopping short when he noticed the camera, arms spinning for balance and almost falling flat on his face. Sorry, sorry, did I ruin the photo? No, we are good, 
my dad said, checking the camera. Hey, well done, Levi. Thanks, he grinned, then turned to me, and when I thought he was about to say congrats to me, he opened his mouth and screamed. Not even words, just one, ah! So I screamed back, and then we were both laughing and hugging, and he was saying, I'm so visiting you at college next year. I don't mind sleeping on the floor. I'll bring a sleeping bag. You'd better. We grinned at each other. Levi had been working at a Seven Eleven for the last month or so, just a couple hours a week, and he'd be, be working there more now that we were done with school. He also had a job as a busboy in a diner at the mall, which he was due to start next week. He still hadn't decided what he wanted to do, so he said he was just going to work until he made up his mind. His mom had told me when I was over at their place for dinner a few days ago that she'd hoped he'd change his mind and that he'd applied to college like most of us, but she sighed resignedly. I suppose I can't force him to go, though. Someone yelled, Hey, Monroe, get your skinny ass over here. And we both looked to see a group of guys waiting to take a photo of the baseball team. Levi had joined up at the start of the season. He ducked away, skirting through the crowds to be part of the photo, and then Noah was back beside me, holding my hand. I caught him looking after Levi. They'd met a couple times and had been polite enough, but there was always something stiff and forced about it. Right now, Noah's eyes narrowed slightly. I squeezed his hand, and he turned back to me, his expression relaxing. The sun behind his head gave the edges of his dark hair an almost golden glow, and his eyes crinkled at the corners with the beaming smile that took over his face as he looked at me. I wrapped my free hand around the, his bicep, because, boy, that bicep, and grinned back. Before I could pull him down for another kiss, Lee jumped at my back. I knew it was Lee without having to look around. The elated laugh in my ear gave him away. The Flynn brothers started chatting over my head about a party we were all going to later tonight to celebrate graduation, and Lee mentioned that he'd heard a rumor about a kissing booth being set up there. I was only half listening. I felt kind of detached, dreamy, my eyes drifted between families embracing, friends taking selfies and trying to fit everyone in the photo, people running to try to talk to each other in case they never saw these people again after today, and my two favorite guys in the world right beside me. Levi caught my eye from where he was talking with his parents. His dad looks so much better lately, his face not so skinny and his skin not so gray. I saw Dixon chatting to a group of people, not with Danny, though. They broke up, up back in January. Rachel was crying, hugging her mom. She got into Brown, of course, on early admission, and I knew she and Lee had talked a lot after they'd seen how turbulent things had been for me and Noah. They both knew they much they had how much they had to commit to staying together through college. And as for Noah and me, we'd already gone through the worst of it. I was sure we had what it took to go to the distance. Whatever came next, Noah kissed the side of my head and Lee held my arm, taking excitedly, talking excitedly about something. I kept hearing about how high school was supposed to be the best years of your life, and then how it really wasn't. And I decided that this wasn't the best time of my life. The rest of it couldn't get much better than it was right now.